Father God, again, we are so grateful for the breath of life, for all things that truly we are blessed, people of God. And so, Lord, as we come to the reading of your word, we pray that you um, help God uh, um, bring forth your presence and your understanding that, Father, we, that we may hear um, of what the Spirit says as we read through your word, God. And, and Father, more than that, not just be those who hear your word, God, but help us to be a people that apply your word in their life, extending the kingdom of God um, on Moloka'i to our families and to our communities and to all the ends of the earth, God. So help us not just be a hearer of the word, but help us to be a doer of the word, God. Bless and anoint our time together, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, so if you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn with me to the book of John. We're going to be reading from the 14th chapter. My title of my talk or my message this morning is Stay Connected. Turn to your neighbor and say, Stay Connected. Stay Connected. So I'm going to wait just for a second as you turn there. And, and again, try to stay connected. We're going to jump right into this kind of um, more reading than normal, um, maybe. Um, but we'll take off from John 14, chapter 14, verse 1. It says, read this. I'm reading from the ESV version, and if you need one Bible, it's all over the pew there. Um, Help yourself to 1 John 14, verse 1. It says, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and I will take you to myself that where I am, you may be also. In verse 4. And you know the way to where I am going. And in verse 5, Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way. And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. For now on you do know him and have seen him. Amen. So let's pause there. And, and wrap our minds around the passage that we have just read. Interestingly enough, this passage is one of the most popular passages that you hear at times in funeral services. Amen? If you've ever been to a funeral, this part, top portion, that is, is read as part of a message or a word given in, um, in the funeral service. It, it's to bring encouragement, amen, and, and have an understanding that it's not the end, but Jesus, the Lord, has, uh, is going and have God to prepare a place for each and every one of us, right? And in this place, in, in the Father's place, there are many rooms, amen, he says, um, I will go to prepare it, you know, pre, you know, before you, uh, and, and then when we come back, come back with you, amen. And, and and we know to this place we call this place heaven, amen. That that Jesus has gone, or, or in this passage, is going to prepare that place for us. And interesting enough, as he is ministering or is he sharing these things to the disciple. 
And Thomas said, Lord, we, 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 we don't know where you're going. Where, where are you going? He, he's kind of dumbfounded to say, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand. Where, where are you going? And, and, and uh, can you show us the way? Amen. Can you show us the way? And, and Jesus replied, I am the way. I am the truth. And I am the life. No one gets to the Father but through me. Amen. Again, and then this one is kind of a universal, uh, one of my favorite scriptures. And uh, in most cases, they're all my favorite scriptures. But I like to say it because most people know it. Everybody recites this. Then Jesus says that he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father, but to the Son, to Jesus. And so, this is a, another popular uh, passage that many Christians alike use uh, uh, in, in kind of a common dialogue to one another. So Thomas asked, I, I don't get it. What are you talking about? You're going to prepare a place in your father's house. There's many rooms. How do I get there? Where, what, where's the path? What is the way? What is the way to the Father's house? And Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way to the Father. I am the way. I am the truth and the life. And then he, then he goes on to say, uh, no one comes to the Father but through me. And if you know me, you would have known also my Father. And from now on, because you, you know me, you know the Father. Because you know me, you know the Father. He says, from now on, do know, from now on, you do know him and have seen him. And, and interesting enough, just the other day, I ran across a cousin of mine. And I, I haven't seen him for years. And uh, he, was at, he was at Atlas, and I was at Atlas too. And, uh, hey, cousin, I never see you a long time. How are you, cousin? You know, and uh, he's one of my older uh, cousins from my, um, my uncle's side. And uh, as we're talking to each other, I'm I looking at him and I'm hearing, wow, he sounds just like my other cousin. Because <clears throat> he had one younger cousin, which is my age, and I hang out with my younger cousin in the days of old. Sound like him, look like him, and I said, talking to him more. Hey, he sound like my uncle. He like, sound like his father. The more I talk to him, and then I look at his feature, I said, man, I can see his father all over in him. And it, it, it just brought joy to me. You know, my, my uncle would pass away this way, right? Some years ago. But when I'm talking to his son, my cousin, I see my other cousin in him, but I see his father in him. And brought me great joy. And as I pondered, I said, man, the passages are so true that when you have seen the son, you have surely seen the father. Amen? Amen? And, and then I, I start reminiscing of all the times that people tell me, oh, you and Kalipi, yeah? They tell because your nose. You see them in your nose. Right, right. And, and I don't know about you guys, but when they see you, they kind of, they know what family you're from already. They go, oh, you must be from the kind. Like, oh, you're mixed. Maybe you want the kind too, right? So, but there's some physical traits that carry over that truly, if I see you right now, Truly, I've seen your father. Mm -hmm. And at times, maybe your mother, because you pull on the trait of, hey, you get your mother's eyes at. Mm -hmm. oh, but you get your father's nose. And, you know, when people are younger, they start goofing off with you and they say, oh, you're taking more of your father's side. You're kind of ugly or something like that. You know, it's like, come on, man. And then for the girls, oh, you must be taking your mother's side because you're more beautiful. You look like your mother. But it just brought me to reminisce of all the times that, um, that when, when we see some physical traits, it carries on. And, and I don't have to have seen your father or mother, but I see it in, other, in, in you. And, and people see it in me. That they see these physical... And then, and then some people, when I was much younger, 
Um, they don't say that they see my father in me and uh, Omar, because maybe um, like some people, I seen one family, oh, the kid was really like one skeleton, and, and, and their parents was a little bit more one of um, big earth. And so I look, oh, that, that's a trait. They don't look like, 20 years later, that skinny person, poof, look like their parents. I go, who would have known? Who would have known? Right? They said, now I see, right? And, and so like even me, when I was much younger and then I grew up, you know, some people would tell me, oh, I see Uncle Billy in you more and more every day. And then you laugh, oh, just like Uncle Billy. <laughs> they, they would say this kind of stuff, right? But just reminiscing of how true the passage of scripture has come to life, that if you have seen the Son, you have seen the Father. But let's move on to, to, to bring another depth of the perception as we look at staying connected. As we read on in verse 8 in, in um, chapter 14, it says, Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and it is enough for us. And Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Who ha whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The, word, the words that I say to you, I do, not, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Verse 11. Believe in me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do and greater works than these will he do because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Amen? So as we wrap our minds on this scriptures, first we see that the previous scripture, Thomas is dumbfounded and saying, show us the way, what way are you talking about, amen? Uh, kind of don't blame him, right, because Jesus was that. He would talk or speak in a depth that you really have to be paying attention. He would then speak in parables and he would weave out of uh, principles and, and, you know, you, you know, sometimes it's just be better to, uh, Listen then to speak. Amen? But here we see a few of them. And, and, and mind you, that takes them some bravery to say, I don't get it, right? Sometimes, I don't know if you like me, but uh, when I was much younger, um, people would tell me, hey, you know, this story or that tool or that thing. And I would say, yeah, I didn't know what they were talking about. But I just would just say, act like I did, right? And not these guys, they never know, so they won't ask. Amen? If you don't know, it's good to ask. And if you don't know, it's even better to say, I don't know. Amen? Yes. Every now and then you play around and you say, hmm, yeah, I, that's right. I, you know, I get it, I get it, but you don't. <laughs> right? Because they don't, they didn't get it. And, and so Thomas said, I, you know, I don't get it. And here Philip said, okay, if you show me the Father, that would be enough. Amen. Philip says, show us the Father and that would be enough. Amen. Again, he didn't get it. <laughs> Amen. He hasn't get it. You said, oh, Philip, how long? How long you was with me and you don't get it? Amen. How long you are with me and you don't see um, that I'm not here alone. I'm not here representing myself. No, there's something deeper that I want you to look at in this conversation. And here, here, here's kind of the switch. When we're talking about physical uh, attributes 
or things that um, like our physical father, we carry the physical traits and attributes of uh, our genealogy. That we get, we know that maybe my nose looks like my dad's and some of our features are carried on. But there's something in here that tells us there's a certain thing that we're talking about. We're talking something different. Even though the physical stuff can be carried on, there's something that cannot really be carried. It's the spiritual aspects of Jesus. Amen? So when you're looking at this part, he said, no, you know, I'm not representing myself. It is, I'm here in the behalf of the Father. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Okay? So now, now we're not talking about the physical appearance, but we're talking about something spiritual inside. And then, and then it says, the words that I say, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Amen? So again, my parents physically, I can, I can look like them. I can kind of eat the same things that they eat because they want to raise me on Vienna sausage. I love Vienna sausage. <laughs> and, and then, then and the Emma girl, she loved Vienna sausage. But, but you look that we eat the kind that our palates become aligned, so to speak. But the things on the outside, or it has an attributes, but the inside is different. Amen. <laughs> The inside is a spiritual thing. Amen? And this is the, the second half. In the beginning, I like you look at the physical half, but then when you look at the spiritual connection that Jesus and the Father are one and has that a connection. And this is what they're talking about in this uh, part. That, that believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me or else believe on the account of the works of themselves. You know? Truly, truly, I say to whoever believes in me also will do the work that I do. Amen? Amen. And so that's a spiritual thing that is carried of a connection. Amen? So uh, from the physical traits, we kind of turn the table to say there's a spiritual trait that we're after that is in Christ Jesus. is connected spiritually to the Father. Okay? So... Um, and, and, then he, and then he brings an encouragement as he says that. He said, well, if you connected in that spiritual trait, I am the Father and the Father is in me. And then in you, right, that you will do greater works. And you, you know, as you go through me, I go through you, that you, I would ask the Father and then we will do it. Amen? At the end he says, I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son if you ask me anything in my name. Amen. Amen. So pretty cool stuff. Physical but the spiritual stuff. Let's turn the page and continue uh, on why reasoning of staying connected, being connected um, in, in that spiritual line. If you turn the page right in the next um, area in, in, in chapter 15 is where I'm going to pick up our next reading. In chapter 15 of same, same, uh, same book of John it says this in chapter 15, 1. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Okay, I'm going to pause there, because I don't know if, if you're kind of... Um, uh, if you're, you, you're sharp in the English language, but I'm, I'm not that sharp in the English language. For many years, I would carry a dictionary, a thesaurus, uh, I would carry multiple books in my bag. And so on the outside, I was trying to play it cool, right? But in the inside, I had kind of a nerdy kind of um, aspect in me. And I would look at, oh, what does that mean? Fiduciary. I want to know what that name is. You know, I want to know what that word is. And so constantly, I would look at um, um, dictionaries or even picture dictionaries or Bible dictionaries. I would have multiple um, tools in my bag. But um, nowadays, you get the um, you get the phone or you get Siri. Hey Siri, what is that? Oh Siri, what is this? And boom, you get the definition. 
aha, that's what it means, right? Okay, so I don't carry all those books in my bags and I just carry the, the phone that I plug it in, amen? But there's one word that, you know, I, I'm not used to, to hearing is that word vine dresser, you know, vine dresser. He dresses the vine, basically, right? That's kind of what it means, the vine dresser. So I went look him up, the vine dresser, and it's someone that that is um, does the pruning or is is in charge. So of of, of the plant or whatever's uh, the tree. So let's read that again because I don't know if you knew what the vine dresser were, but um, God plays the part. God the Father plays the part of the vine dresser. I am the true vine, this is Jesus. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Okay? So he's the one that does the pruning. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, the vine dresser, the father, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. Okay? So you take away, you know, I do landscaping, right, maintenance, and um, Pastor B, sometimes we joke around, we call them landscaping. But anyways, I think that's pretty cool. But anyways, in the, in the branch, you know, get some branch, they just die for whatever they are. All brown and practically falling off. Take a long time, sometimes, for the, that old branch to just broke. So sometimes you just broke home, but thing just perish on the ground. So they're talking about that branch that, you know, that old, no more leaf on them. And some of you guys, many of you guys are gardeners and all that too. Like, see that? So you broke off the, the old branch. But get other branches, they, they green and stuff like that. And they get leaves, but no more fruit. And so in one of them, no more, no more hope, the, the brown one, they just broke off and throw away. And the other one, they trim, trim a little bit, they cut them a little bit, cut them back, so they can grow stronger and bear good fruit. Again, we're talking about the plants, but we're really talking about people, amen? We're talking about us. We're talking about our lives and how God, um, some things need to be thrown out and some things need to be pruned in our lives. So every branch that does not bear fruit, he takes away that every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it may bear more fruit, more healthy the tree can become. Already you are, are um, it says, uh, already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, Unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him. He it is that bear much fruit. In, oh, excuse me. Whoever abides in me and I in him. He it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me you cannot do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will but be done unto you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that you, your joy may be full. Okay? So, pause there for a second as we look at he continues that to say connected, be connected with me. Stay connected in me. Abide in me and I in you. Amen. Now, before we talked about the physical appearance that or attributes that we inherit 
from our Father, but really we're talking about a spiritual inheritance that we get from Abba Father through Jesus Christ. The spiritual, spiritual connection, and He clearly tells us, abide in me, and I'm in you. Abide in my love, and I abide in these things. There's a spiritual connection, and so if, like we say, God is our Father, then we are brothers, we are sisters in the in the Lord, Amen. Amen. That 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 unites us as a, as as family, as Ohana. We are spiritually Ohana, and and there's some crazy word that we always say, okay, blood is thicker than water, but here, Amen. But the spirit is thicker because it's in the blood, Amen. It's in the blood of Jesus. It's in the blood of Jesus. And then he keeps on encouraging. To stay connected, stay within me, abide, command. He's continuing to say, abide in my love. And, and in this, you will find, you will find that, that God is glorified. In this, you will find that God is glorified and that our joy may be full or complete. That your joy may be full and complete. He kind of sums it up and wraps up, and this is going to wrap up our reading and our talk today as we read the final piece of, of, of today's um, message. In verse 12, it says this. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this. That someone lay down his life for a friend. You are my friends. If you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servants. For the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my father. I have made known to you. Full disclosure, amen? Full disclosure. All that is known of the Father is released and made it known to us. Not the kind part disclosure. Not the kind hidden agenda. One guy had one label, I cheat the other guy so you can get the discount. And I'm thinking like, I bet he's cheating me too. <laughs> amen? But, but in Christ, full di disclosure, right? Full disclosure. He is one. He is made known all these things to us. In verse 16, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should abide so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you. So that you will love one another. Amen. Amen. That you will love one another. So, um, especially in the religious world or the religious realm, let's continue to encourage our brothers and our sisters from different denominations and down the street. And we don't want to say, oh, they believe in that. They believe in that. Pray, praise the Lord. Peace and blessing. Peace and blessing. Peace and blessing. Amen. They, 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 they love the Lord just as much as we love the Lord. Amen. So we're not looking for fault, but we're just glorifying God. That they're they're glorifying God. They lifting up the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That truly, as we get that attitude. That we really can love one another. Amen. That we really can receive one another. What how God has called us to be in our in our different flavors, in our different way. Amen. Um, some guys are free spirited, and other guys are tight. Or some guys are uh, 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 extroverts, and others are introverts. Amen. But together. We are all converts. <laughs> but anyways, we're going to call up the worship team. We're going to pray. And uh, we're going to close with a song. Um, thank you, Lord.
Well, before we pray, uh, I guess today is the, our communion Sunday, so I, um, I'm going to ask Jerry um, to help with the communion, and, and we'll, um, we'll close in prayer and bless the communion if you want to partake with our communion today with us. You may, you may so. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. Um, we pray uh, continuously that um, we stay connected, we abide in you. Father, we, we are so blessed that we serve a God of unlimited chances. As long as we have breath, we get chance. And so we thank you, God. We thank you, God. No one is beyond your reach. Help us to see other people as you see them, Lord God. As your creation, God. People that need in your likeness and in your image. And so, Father, we thank you, God. Help us again to abide in you, to abide in us. Help us to carry out loving each other, loving one another. And in that love that people would know that we serve you, that we are your people, and that you are our God. And so thank you, God, for this message, this time. And Father, as we get to the time of communion, we pray that we continue to have your way, Lord God, that you bless this juice that represents your blood, God. Bless and anoint it. Lord God, this, um, this bread that represents the body of Christ that you bless and anoint it. And as we partake in this communion, God, that we search and just glorify you, God. Renew and be restored in you. So that you will order our steps, God, into peace your righteousness. Father, you, your name to be praised. So bless and anoint, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.